Welcome to the Land Your Bet Sports Betting Podcast. Josh Lander have three picks here for you on Tuesday's NBA slate. We're looking at some in-season tournament action. So if that doesn't get you going, I don't know, maybe you're not really an NBA fan because it's been a pretty fun ride so far with a couple in-season tournament games. I'm enjoying it, man. I think it's at least fun and interesting. We're going to be looking at three picks that I don't think will necessarily be impacted by that, but I do think that there's some really great value in a couple games that I'm looking at here. The first one is Minnesota at Golden State. The other one is Denver and the Clippers. I've got two player two player props total on the night, as well as a best bet from that Denver and Clippers game. So let's go ahead and jump right into it because I don't yet have the results of two of Monday night's games rather to be able to give you the full updated record. Um, but I do have some picks. So Carl Anthony Towns is the first one I'm getting into here. Over eight and a half rebounds for Cat against the uh, the Dubs here in the sort of back to back, if you will. Played on Sunday night in Golden State. Going to play on Tuesday night in Golden State as well. Incidentally, I will be at that game, so plenty of fun opportunity to live bet as well. Follow along on Twitter if you want to see the uh, the fun bets that I'm making from the court. I feel like you get a really good feel for what the game is when you're actually there watching it. I feel like I've had some really solid, I mean, I know I have, had some really solid nights betting live while being at a Dubs game or another team for that matter. So getting into the cat bet, though, here, I- I'm really actually proud of myself for finding this in the way that I did. I mean, it's not like it's brilliant to go Anthony Carl Towns over eight and a half rebounds for minus 105 on DraftKings for a full unit. It doesn't take brilliance. It's it's not like it's like a big balls bet or anything, but it is something that I think has a pretty heavy reason. It has strong reasoning, right? That that I think it will persist throughout the rest of the season and definitely in this game against the Dubs, who incidentally are the second worst team at limiting power forwards to rebounds. Uh, one of the reasons that... You know, Cat was one of the reasons that that was the case uh, and that their numbers continue to look so bad because of the 13 rebound game that he had on Sunday against this team. But more importantly, it's the way that that he and Rudy Gobert are coming together. Right. So what I have listed here for those of you list, uh, watching rather on YouTube is that Rudy is number one in rebound chances and Cat is number eight in rebound percentage. So that means that when Cat has a legitimate rebound chance, he is getting uh, the, the rebound at such a high percentage that he is the eighth best in the league. Rudy has the number one rebound chances, which means that he's essentially in position to rebound the ball based on where it bounces uh, every single t- like 22 times a game, essentially, which is number one in the league. Yet Rudy only has a 57 percent rebound percentage. Cat has that has a 64 and a half percent rebound percentage, which is good for eighth in the league. So what that tells me is Rudy Gobert is doing a lot of the the sort of yeoman's work and boxing out at least one guy on each possession, if not two, which clears the lane for Cat to really be bigger than the guy that he's going up against at that point um, and get the rebounds that are available to him and would be available to Rudy if he wasn't busy boxing out multiple people at once. This isn't like a knock on Cat, and it's actually probably more of just praise for Rudy than anything because of how well he's doing his job as just the grunt work, right? That's what he's in there for. It was weird for a while that a, a offensive talent like Cat wasn't able to do much on either side of the ball with Rudy in tow last season. But I think that there's been a legit change here in the way that their spacing is working with these two guys on the floor at the same time. There's going to be a few more misses as well for these dubs. First of all, Steph Curry is questionable. I do think he'll play. And I think if he's close to not playing, Adam Silver might kind of jump in a little bit and say, hey, man, I put this in-season tournament together, Steve Kerr and company. You better play Steph Curry or we're going to have some issues. So Steph Curry should be playing in this game, but I do think it's somewhat indicative of the fact that he's being overused right now and they don't want him at that high of a usage. The fact that you would consider not playing him two nights later on a home back-to-back like that, it doesn't really make any sense when you do want this game and you do want the in-season tournament and you're going up against one of the best teams in the West right now in the T-Wolves who just showed you up. So I think he plays, but even with him in there, they're in 15th in true shooting percentage this year. And that's t- that takes into account all the different various uh, shot types outside of just two-point percentage. It takes into account the fact that it's a little bit harder to shoot from deep and the free th- the free throw line is easier to shoot from so it takes into account all that stuff and the the dubs are always in the top three let's say like i'm talking about for the last like 10 years since steph curry was a thing in the bay area this team is in the top five in true shooting and they are outside of the top 10 right now they're 15th and that's 
really, it, 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 like I said, emblematic of the fact that Steph Curry is doing too much right now uh, and is forced to do too much, which is not good for this offense, which actually relies on pace and space way more than it relies on one man to do it, to run pick and rolls. So all of that said, there's going to be more rebounds available to Cat, who just came off a game of 18 rebound chances, which is more than he's averaging on the season against the uh, against the Dubs. That's what he had on the season. He's at 14 rebound chances a game. Rudy had 19, still had fewer rebounds than Cat continuing to prove the, uh, the the logic of why I like Cat so much to go over eight and a half boards in this one. Moving on to the second pick here. We're going with our Jacks, baby. I love when I get to to uh, to bet on Reggie Jackson to do well in basketball because he's actually playing. I, I mean, he's just a fun guy to watch, man. I think a lot of guys don't like him, uh, <laughs> stat nerds and the like, but over 18 and a half points, rebounds, and assists for, for Reggie Jackson, who is technically the backup point guard on this team. However, he is going to be the starting the starting point guard, starting point guard on this team moving forward uh, until Jamal Murray comes back. Who he will be out for this game. I don't know that it's too serious for Jamal, but he is sitting out uh, a couple of these games at the beginning of the year when they needs a little bit of a rest apparently. So um, he's going to be out in this one. Our Jax is coming in, and he is the biggest beneficiary of the absence of Jamal Murray. Um, so when Jamal goes out, our Jax just skyrockets everything. He goes from about eight points a game this season up to nearly 14 a game. A uh, really nice jump there. He goes from thir- uh, 28 and a half minutes, most importantly, to uh, he goes from playing 21 minutes a game, excuse me, to playing 28 and a half minutes a game when Murray does not play. He ups everything else as well, the assists and the rebounds, et cetera. So without him in three games this season, where he's well above, he's comfortably, I'll say, above the 18 and a half PRA that we need him to get. In the last two, especially, as he continues to click and get sort of more involved in the offense with Jokic, especially in the last two games that Murray has missed, which is the last two games that they played 24 points, rebounds and assists per game for Reggie Jackson. That's in 30 minutes a game, 17 points per game. Um, And and there's a, a reason for that. He's, he's now the main pick and roll ball handler with Nikola Jokic, which I mean, can you think of a better guy, whether you're popping or rolling to the rim as the roll, the pick and roll guy, the roll man in your pick and roll, it just makes it everything easy for Reggie Jackson. He's had why I'm looking at it right now. He's had five uncontested threes per game in the last two because Jokic just does that for it. He just draws and sucks everybody in with him. Um, when they're on the floor together, they have a uh, the team has a 13.3 net rating in the last two games. That's in 47 minutes that they're on the floor together. Nice sample size, I would say. And they have a 64% assist percentage, which means that uh, specifically. Arjax is the one who has such a high uh, assist percentage at this point because of the fact that he's playing with Murray like uh, with um, Jokic like that. Like I said, he's he's the main ball handler in that. So they're taking on this Clippers team, which if you need to know, it's a disaster right now with James Harden in there. Uh, and that's part of the mainly on defense is, is where that disaster finds itself uh, really reckoning for this team. They, they have 118. Or I'm sorry, 121 defensive ratings since uh, Harden has shown up. On the road, especially, that's where they've been absolutely terrible. On the season, they have 121 defensive rating on the road in general. 124 in the specifically the home games that they played with James Harden in the lineup, uh, which I believe has been one now since he came in, into town. So that does bring me to my third bet because it's pretty much just an offshoot of this one, man. Like, Nuggets by a million. The spread is minus six as I'm recording this for you guys on Monday night ahead of the Tuesday slate. I What? Like... Why, why are we respecting or they haven't won a game yet and they've lost to the Memphis Grizzlies on Sunday in a game that they were winning. Uh, this is the best team in the league. It's the best team at home. I mean, I, if, look, Celtics fans like relax. Uh, fine. Maybe maybe you're the best team in the East and I won't try to question the league here, but like. Nuggets are clearly in the West, the best team at home, clearly the best team. And and my opinion is strongly that they are such for the entire league as well. And I don't want to hear this Boston Celtics regular season stuff just yet. So um, I'm going to take that minus six. It's minus 120. I'm putting 1.2 units on it. And for those of you listening who couldn't see the screen, I should also mention that in the second best there with Reggie Jackson, I'm just putting 0.5 units on it for now. Uh, I don't need to get crazy with this. I, there's nothing you could do to make me not love this Denver bet. There's some things that could potentially happen to make the Reggie Jackson uh, prop not the best bet of all time. So like because it's Tuesday night, I like to put half a unit on it now. And if I'm feeling even more you know, spry about it tomorrow, I'll go ahead and put another half unit on Reggie Jackson. But for the, the Nuggets to win by six, I'm putting 1.2 units on it. A few things that are very relevant here for this Clippers team since James Harden came around. And it hurts me, man. Like I don't love 
hating on anyone like James Harden, but it's a really crime against basketball more than anything when you're watching the Clippers play offense right now. In their last four with James in town, minus 11.6 net rating. With Harden in the game himself, a minus, his personal net rating is a minus 26, man. Like, he's definitely not <laughs> bringing much on defense, but the offense has been what's really incredible. He will not shoot catch-and-shoot shots right now, which is mind-boggling. Uh, and, and as a result, like, he's really just become a complete detriment to them because he just stands either in the corner or over, you know, far away from, uh, on the wing in a way that just crowds the offense. Um, when he's not on the floor right now, they are a plus 16.8 net rating. This, this Clippers team as a whole when he's not on the floor. So like <laughs> he's going to play, they just traded all that stuff. He's going to play. He, he came over here to play. So it doesn't really matter that he's that bad right now. They're going to continue to say that they want to figure it out. But look, Denver's six and at home. They're beating teams by 12.3 points per game in their building. It's the same concept as last season. I believe now they are 40, no 56 and eight at home since last season I, I it's absurd it's absolutely absurd they cover as well despite the fact that they're often double digit favorites and look i would play this up to minus 10 i'm gonna i'm gonna what ladder you want to whatever you want to call it i'm gonna take some alt spreads if you want to talk about laddering alt spreads for the nuggets to win this game i'm fine with it if the clippers make me look stupid because all of a sudden Kawhi Leonard decides to try on offense and PG starts making shots and James Harden doesn't look like a complete shell of the MVP that he once was fine, fine, whatever. But all of the uh, use case and, and experience that we have right now is that this is one of the worst teams in the league with James Harden on it. And it's going up against the best team in the league. And we have a six point spread for a team that averages a margin of victory, double that at home against teams much better than this Clippers team. I Maybe I'm missing something, and that's why it could be so trappy that I'm just stepping right in it. But I'm going to step in it with 1.2 units uh, and move forward with that one. So that is all the time I have for you guys. Quick run-through of these bets for you and those watching on YouTube. Call Anthony Towns over 8.5 rebounds, minus 105 with a full unit. We also have Reggie Jackson in that Denver Nuggets Clippers game over 18 and a half PRA minus 105 on DraftKings 0.5 units on our and then a full 1.2 units on the Clippers and Denver Nuggets game for the Nuggets to win by six points or more. Like I said, I'm also before I, you know, before long here, I'm going to get this video up for you guys might put a little bit more on an alt spread for him and ladder that all the way up to minus nine and a half or 10 and a half. Cause I don't think this is going to be a close game. So that is all the time I have for you, though. Appreciate the time, everybody. As always, if you would, like and subscribe to that page. It's super helpful. It's much appreciated. Uh, I do see some of you guys coming back out and uh, seeing the video, some recurring viewers, which I really appreciate. Love to have the usuals on hand. We'll start doing some more fun stuff as we move through the season, but I want to start to build this little audience with you guys and um, really start to hear what you have to say as well. If you wouldn't mind following on Twitter, super helpful. I'm giving out stuff there. The NBA Coast to Coast podcast as well. Definitely should have mentioned that off the top. That's where all the final picks go with Nate and myself. I don't have the record to show you. Otherwise, I would have, but head over to the lines.com youtube page uh, and make and check out the videos that we're putting up each and every day eight total picks a player props video with four picks a best bets video with four picks um, so you guys can get everything you need from the both of us and you know choose your favorite capper maybe you want to take some some more of my bets or some more nate's bets uh it's all, all of, we're just bringing you as much info as we can for the bets that we're making so that you can also use that for yourselves which is what i'm doing here and getting these early out to you before i get those coast to coast ones out so continue to follow along much appreciated y'all until i see you next happy betting